my kudos is 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 a hundred percent to you on on um on the coaching that you are that 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 you that you're giving to us and most importantly to my team I, and i end it this because we're you know we're in the same region and we're in the same area we don't have to drive to you right i had agents complaining on driving to you right. oh i can't make it there eight o'clock eight thirty right you know so we have to take it we're taking advantage of what you are teaching and coaching to us so thank you john corey very, very grateful for those very kind words. Thank you, sir. I re it means a lot to me. It really he does. He speaks the truth, John. Thank you for that, Wayne. I appreciate that. Amen. And I'm hey. up here in New Jersey freezing my tail off of John. I even told my team leader, I said, there's nobody like this John Deets. <laughs> He's one of a kind. Yes, one of a kind. Is. Yeah. There's a lot of people <laughs> that would say that's a good thing. <laughs> All right. So th think of me when you're freezing your tail off. I'm out walking in the morning in uh, 85 degrees and 100% humidity. So and it's, it's April. So come visit me in July. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to jump right to a white screen. Uh, everybody cross your fingers. And let's hope that this works today. And if it does, cool. And if not, I've got plan B. I'm ready Is to your work. pen charged and working today, John? It is. I'm well, excited. I'm excited, right? I'm so, telling you, I'm waiting for it. All right. Here it comes. So we have four stages of a real estate market. The market is either appreciating or we've reached the top or the peak or we're in a depreciating market or we've hit the bottom. Now, what I want you to do as I'm talking is in your local market. I want you to look by zip code or by city, uh, depending on the makeup of the market that you're in. And go bigger to get more numbers, go smaller in order if you have too many numbers. And what we're doing is the math formula to create a supply and demand analysis is active listings in a $50,000 price range. So for example, 550 to 600 or 950 to 1 million. And then I want you to look at solds in the same price range in the same area. So if I'm looking at a zip code, it's all of the active listings from 950 to a million dollars within that zip code. And it's all the sold in the same price range. We'll stick with 950 to a million uh, within the same location. C is B divided by six. Now the reason it's B divided by six, because when we're looking for solds, we're going back six months. So it's all the sold in the last six months. And then C is B divided by six. And what that tells me is how many homes are selling every 30 days. So if 24 homes sold, for example, if the answer to B is 24, then the answer to C is four. Easy, right? Now, D is A divided by C. So let's just say again that A is 32. If A is 32, then D is eight. Everybody following me? Say yes, give me a thumbs up, tell me, tell me yes, there we go. Now, if this is the market that I'm looking at, this is my subject property, I'm meeting with you and you're selling your home and your price somewhere between 950 and a million dollars. Where are you over here? Are you in an appreciating market? Are you at the top? Is the market depreciating? Are you at the bottom? Somebody take yourself off mute and talk to me.
Okay, so I'll talk to you. So if there is an eight month supply of inventory and Natalie, you're my seller. Natalie, we have 32 homes for sale and there are four selling every 30 days. In order for you to sell your home, you have to be one of the top four properties. Now, when we get into a market where there is an oversupply of inventory and not very many people buying, for example, in a market where there's 32 homes for sale and only four are selling every 30 days, are there going to be sellers that we're competing against that are motivated to get their home sold? Yes. Yeah. Are there going to be sellers in that price range who might be more motivated than you are? Yeah. yeah. And if you're one of those sellers and you know that you're fighting over buyers, would you possibly lower your price in order to get your home sold? The answer is yes. Yeah. If one of these homes is in your neighborhood and the seller dropped their price from 950,000 to 925,000 and their home is identical to you, to your home and it, and it sold, what does that do to the value of your home? Well, this is the answer right here. It's number three, because the last home that just sold creates a new ceiling. The next home is gonna sell for less money. So the conversation is, where are we in this market? So markets, go up, they come down, they go up, they come down, and so on. And if we tracked real estate over a long period of time, this is what it should look like. That's the trend line. And over time, the values are going up. Now, here's the question. What is the market that we're in today? Let's just say, for example, this is 2020. Cool. Let's go back and study the past. Let's look at the real estate market shift of 1998. So from 1998 until 2001, we were in a shift and prices were in that third stage, which means they were depreciating. Now that shift looked more like this. In other words, it was more of a V market. In other words, it took three years to get to the bottom. That's the fourth stage. It took another three years for the prices to recover. So by 2004, the prices were back where they were in 1998. Now in 2006, we hit another market shift. And in that shift, it wasn't a V market, it was more of an L market followed by a slow recovery, which ended up looking more like a U. This is 2012, when the market started to recover. In about 2016, we were back where we were in 2006. In other words, it took about 10 years to recover. So here's the question. This is today. 2020. Everything we're looking at is pointing to the fact that we are headed towards a recession. Gary Keller in his interview with Monica Reynolds just a couple of day, days ago said that we were heading for one anyways, guys. Corona just made it happen faster. So deal with it. He also said that we're going to see a shift in the housing market. And Monica asked him point blank, are prices going to go down? And Gary said, yes, they're going to go down. Now, the question is, what does that look like? Is it gonna be like the market from 98 to 2001? Is it gonna be like the market we saw in 2008? And here's my thought. My thought is, I'll go to a different color, that we're going to see a decrease for a couple years and 
it's going to come back, not like a V, it's not gonna bounce right back, but it's gonna come back a little bit more aggressive than it did in 2012 and 2022, correction, 2025, which means we're five years away from your home being worth what it is today. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, if that's true, and we're looking at $950,000 today, we have two choices. We can either lower the price to sell it at current market value or price in front of the market in order to create the market versus chase the market and sell the prop, sell your home for close to 950 as possible. Or we can chase the market down and maybe sell it for less or not sell it at all. And if we're choosing not to sell it at all, that means we're waiting until 2025 to get the same price we want today. So then the question that I would ask you is, are you willing to wait five years in order to get exactly the price you can get today? All right. So take yourself off mute. Talk to me. Give me ahas. What'd you learn? What are you going to do different? John, why, do you, why do you think it's five years? What is it? Is it because the, the fundamentals are better this time than they were in back in 2006, 2008? Yeah, Kim. I think that the difference is, is the market shift in 2008 was caused by a housing crisis. Yeah. This is more of a recession that we were heading towards anyways and a health crisis. Yeah. that will lead to a market shift. The other thing that's different about this market is there is no inventory. There, you're use, if you do a supply and demand analysis like I showed you in your market, you're going to tell me I'm out of my mind. Matter of fact, on my 830 call, my Coral Springs agents were looking at me and saying, John, you're nuts. We're still less than a 60-day supply. I, I don't see it. This isn't going to happen. So I have a hard time convincing them that this is going to happen because to them, you know, it's sunshine and rainbows, and unicorns. Life is good. John? Yeah. Uh, do you think this, is this price point specific or is this just, is this industry, gen, industry generic? Oh, a hundred percent price point specific. So it's also type of property specific as well, Kevin. So let's just say, and I'm going to say Coral Springs because I know this is where you live. And is there a forecast for Coral Springs? No. Just like there's not a forecast for the United States. I'm not going to turn on the weather and here it's going to be 75 and sunny all over the United States. That just doesn't happen. It's particular locations. So I could look in the Coral Glade School District, for example, that's where I live. And the market in the Coral Glade School District is going to be different than another part of Coral Springs. It's also gonna be different based on price range. So in Coral Springs, average price is 300. So the market from 300 to 350 is very, very different than the market from 700 to 750. This can be a seller's market while this is a buyer's market. Does that answer your question, Kevin? Yes, it does, thank you. Yeah, and that's why it's so important to understand how to do a supply and demand analysis. So when somebody asks you, how's the market, my answer to that question always is, it depends. It depends on where your home is located, what type of property you're selling, and what kind of price range you're in. So if I looked at Dade County, this is ocean over here, guys, and I looked at the condo market on the beach in Dade County, I'm looking at anywhere from a two to three year supply of inventory, right? Buyer's market. Total buyer's market. 
Wayne, I could have 21 active and I could have one selling every 30 days. That's a tragedy. Now, if you're the seller of that property, you've got 21 homes you're competing with. And in order to sell your home, you have to be the one. That's a, hard, you, that's a hard nut to call. You have to be the best property. You have to be the best decorated, the best up to date and the best price. Yeah, and price fixes everything. You, you, have to be willing, you have to be willing to sell your home for less than it's worth. Let's just be honest. Now let's go back to this drawing over here because I think everything is perspective. So if I'm talking to that seller and they've got a property that is worth $1.5 million today, and there's a two year supply of inventory. Well, we know that's a depreciating market. There's no question about it. So Wayne, if you're that seller and your home is valued at $1.5 million today and there's 21 properties for sale and there's one selling every 30 days and our range is 1.25 to $1.5 million. You wanna be the one? I want price, to be your the home, one. price your home at $1.3 million. Oh, you're I was going to say 1.1 and get multiple offers. You're selling at $200,000 below market value. You've got a fighting chance. And then the seller is going to say, well, I'm giving my home away. Okay, fair enough. What if two years from now, your home is worth $1 million? And you sold it today for $1.3 million. Are you giving your home away? No. No. I probably made money in the savings of every all the costs involved of the home. Yeah. So this type of property has huge holding costs. So when you huge. look at every month, all the way up to 36 months, if my average holding cost is $10,000 a month, it costs me $360,000 over the next three years not to sell my home. That's why I said maybe it's 1.3 isn't the good number. Maybe the 1.1 is the better number and maybe you get two or three offers. Cool. All right. Talk to me. Ahas. What'd you learn? What are you going to do different? Can I ask one question? What does the Please. D in the equation mean, actually? I, you know, I understand what you're doing. It's perfect. But if yeah. somebody wants to tell somebody what the D is? D is the inventory. So D is supply and demand. To me, a D okay. is how many months of inventory do we have? I understand that. Okay. Yep. So if, there's, if, if A is 21 and C is... Three, you make it seven. I get seven it. Seven months supply of inventory. Yeah, I get that part. I just but, wasn't happy. If I wanted to explain that, I wanted to know what the D was in mm -hmm. verbiage. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So one more thing I want to share with you guys is Gary Keller shares that a shifting market is a market of opportunity. So I'm going to go to share screen and we're going to look at broker metrics. So this is broker metrics for Coral Springs. This is where my market center is located. This is where Keller Williams Realty Coral Springs is. And for the first two weeks of April, uh, Keller Williams Realty Coral Springs is at 11.2% of market share. Cool, right? This office right over here, number one a year ago. So two things I want you to hear. When a market shifts, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to take market share. And the market share you take, you never give back. The market share you lose, you never get back. And if I went and I revised this search and I showed you what it looked like for the same period of time a year ago, Remember, Keller Williams Coral Springs is at 11.2%. Now let's look at it a year ago. Four point five percent. 
right here. That's exciting. Wow. So, Corey, I think that was you that said wow, right? Oh, I thought I was on mute. Yeah. Yeah, I, I recognize <laughs> your, your voices, guys. You know I love you when I recognize your voices. Yeah. Tell me what that show. Tell me what that tells you. What's your I, aha? I mean, I, I am, I am, I, I, I'm excited, man. Mm. You know, it, you know, I have always accelerated in the market shift. Um, I, I can't. I probably said um, market share in the last six to seven months a thousand times, and my team has probably heard it. 500 times there you go i am extremely stoked and i'm completely i didn't even know those numbers were like that but i am i'm super excited so well, let it shift. let's do this so not to pick on these guys please <laughs> we could okay. have agents from their office on this call I'm by sorry, the way. sorry I invite, guys I, I invite everybody to this call I, Sorry this is me. this is just an op. No, 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 not you. No, 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 no. I'm the team leader here, so I'm the one that's going to get accused of trying to recruit. Trust me, um, and I'm not. But I think I, I, this is a this is a study in markets. It's a study in how markets shift, and it's also a study in why it's so freaking important to understand when a market shifts. Waiting is not the answer. Putting in your, your business in neutral is not the answer. The reason Coral Springs went from 4. Point, where are we at? 4.5% to more than 11% is because our gas pedal is to the floor. Right, Wayne? Mm -hmm. And it's true, John. And I just realized with watching your broker matrix, this is nothing short of a war. You never give back land you won in a war. Nope. Now I want you to look at something, 21.2%. Let's look at the same office one year later. Six point six percent. They went from 22% to 6.6%. The market share you lose in a shift, you never get back. Never. And the strange thing about it, John, is you're focusing on Remax just because, and they've got Park Creek, Remax in motion. They've got three offices surrounding us. It's just another real estate office, that's all. Here's the difference. I think the, dif Here's, I think the difference is though, is that Keller Williams, like we, like we really, really pour into people. Um, and I've been with multiple offices, so yeah, I can too. say that for a fact. And I've owned an office. I've been with Coldo Banker. I've been with Century 21. Um, our training and I mean, like our Zooms are out of control right now because yep. you can, you could train all day if you wanted to. I do. It's just, <laughs> that's what grows. But I think that that's what grows our office and attracts people to it. 100%. Yeah. And this is, this is just the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. We're only 30 days into this, guys. Mm -hmm. Imagine what this looks like six months from now. Mm -hmm. So I see one of my team leader friends uh, Topo made it in. in another, um, um, another part of the country on the call, Kim. Kim Crouch, hi. Uh, you could do this in your market, and you absolutely should do this in your market and see how your market center compares to the rest of the MLS. Yes, but remember, I'm an MCA. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I coached you as a team leader, so you did. you're, you you're did. a team leader MCA to me. It's the same thing. <laughs> I don't really. No, see I complete. I completely agree with you, and and we are, we are really leading in. Um, training and getting getting other offices together to mastermind mm -hmm. and it's fun to be a part of that cool love it I have a all question. right yes hi Paige. um so when we're you know going down the market's depreciating and the seller can say well even if my home value depreciates my next home value will also be low so it's really the same thing it could be it really depends. 
And, and it depends on a couple things. If the buyer, if the seller is going to buy a more expensive home, then they're actually going to net gain on that transaction because if market values drop by 10% and I sell a $400,000 home, the value is down by 40 grand. If I purchase a $600,000 home, the value is down by 60 grand. It's a net gain of $20,000. So the seller would be absolutely right in that conversation. However, if interest rates go up and I'm going to be getting a mortgage on the purchase, my payment is actually going to be more money. And buyers don't care about the price. They care about how much money they're paying for money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Sure. My pleasure. So John, John, I, from the last 830 call, we got into supply, demand, buyer, seller markets. And with prices fluctuating at the top on the way down, if we actually end in a buyer's market, prices are going to fall further. They will. You know, when I was a mortgage broker 12 years ago, we were in a buyer's market. I didn't care. It was wonderful. <laughs> but as real estate and listings and, and the fight, I mean, should we be afraid overall of a buyer's market? I mean, the volume of sales will certainly go up, but the dollar amounts will certainly be down. No, you shouldn't be afraid. So Wayne, if I were to ask you what your monthly goal is, and let's just, don't tell me your goal, just pretend you're one of 20,000 real estate agents in South Florida. And there's more than that, by the way. Right. Uh, what do you think the average real estate agent would say if I asked them what their goal was for how many homes they want to sell every, every month? I would say they would probably like to see a closing a week and whatever that looks like as far as sales go. Cool. Um, and then so, in the middle of all of that, so, we're so pa we pa pause for a moment. So four sales a month, right? Right? Please. Yeah. And if we go from a market where there's 4,000 homes being sold every 30 days to a market where there's 2,000 homes being sold every 30 days, the market's dropped by 50%. And it's not going to drop that much. That's true. Hear me? I do. And... If there's 2,000 homes being sold every 30 days, can you get your four? Well, with a team leader like John No, Dean. no, no. Can you get your four? Can you get your four? Yes, I can. <laughs> and then who cares? Point well taken, but all that's right. what we talk about all the time. Yeah, well, you know, Wayne, you've heard this 100 times because you're in my office, but not everybody else on the call has heard this 100 times. And Michael will love this. You know, I'm going to talk about pizza, Michael. If I'm having all of you over for pizza and there's 40 people on this call and we order eight large pizzas, each of them have 10 slices, that's 80 slices. There's enough for two for all of us. Two slices each. Yes or yes? If yes. they only deliver half the pizzas and there's only 40 slices, I'm still getting my two. The rest of you can fight over what's left. <laughs> Got it? Got it. Okay. John, can you send me yesterday's um, recording? If I've got it. <laughs> I've been having some Zoom te technical difficulties on recordings. I'll check and see, Karen. Thank and you so I much. Do, for and go again. to my YouTube, go to my Facebook page because everything's on YouTube now. So there's a ton of videos on YouTube if you could just download it off my Facebook page. Thank All right, so it's 10.04, and I have a coaching appointment that started four minutes ago, which means I have somebody on the line. Oh, with... man. <laughs> All right, John, go coach them. They need it. All right, you guys Bye, make it a John. great day. Thank Bye, John. Thanks, John. Michael, good seeing you.